Bonjour mes amis and welcome to Gourmet Cooking. We're going to do a great Italian meal tonight. One of my very, very favorite dishes. Veal scallopini a la marsala. Nice pieces of veal, floured, cooked in butter, and then a sauce made with marsala wine. It is so delicious. And then we're going to make some homemade pasta to go along with that wonderful sauce off of the veal. And then as a side dish, we're going to have this beautiful spinach. And we're going to blanch that, drain it, and add olive oil and lemon juice just for a straightforward, nice green vegetable. So that's our meal for today. And for those of you that are interested, the recipes for the scallopini and the spinach uh, are, and the pasta uh, the, are on page 200. But, excuse me, the pasta is on page 61. All of the recipes are in volume three. So that's 61 for the pasta and 200 for the other uh, recipes for this, this show. All right, let's start off first of all. We've got to make some pasta, that takes a little time. And then we've got our spinach to do and to take care of our veal. So we're gonna start first of all with the spinach. I have about two pounds of spinach, nice leaf spinach here. We've stemmed that, taken all the hard stems out, and we want to blanch that in some water. So we have about a half of an inch of water in this pot that's all nice and hot and boiling. We're going to take our spinach and put it into the pot, and there's a lot of water clinging to that spinach. So it's gonna take about three to five minutes for that to blanch, and then we'll drain it and then proceed with our recipe. So we have a lot of spinach here, but you know, this just goes down to nothing when it cooks. So you need a large volume of raw to get a reasonable quantity of cooked. So we're gonna put that in now and put our lid on and turn our heat up and let that blanch for about three to five minutes. Let's put this in the back, it's out of the way, and we're a little short of room up front today. So we have our spinach going. Let's move now to our pasta. Let's take our pasta and make a fresh batch of fettuccine, or ribbon pasta. Now we're only gonna make a half of the recipe here in, for the sake of time. I've made a lot of it ahead already, and we'll cook that. But let's start with a half a recipe of the pasta. We have one cup of flour. The recipe calls for two to make a larger quantity. We want to make a well with that flour. And into the center of that well, we break one egg, two eggs in the regular recipe. We put a teaspoon of salt, as a half teaspoon of salt here. And uh, Let's see, I have a shell here. Let's take that out. There it is. And we want to add now a teaspoon or two teaspoons in the regular recipe of olive oil. And we start by beating the egg and the olive oil and the salt together. And as we go, we're gonna incorporate a little bit of the flour and blend that in. And I hope in a very quick time, we'll have a nice dough, which we then can knead and then cut into our fettuccine shape. In the meantime, let's get this all mixed up here and add more flour. It goes rather quickly. Now this little one egg batch should go quicker than the two, simply since you don't have the volume to consider. Now as it goes to the point that that egg is no longer uh, uh, liquefied and will run all over the place. Now it's the time to get your hands into the picture. And once we do that, we can then start incorporating the rest of the flour into the egg. And that should come to a ball of dough fairly quickly. Now flour is very funny, sometimes depending on the flour, the weather, and the size of the egg, the amount of liquid, the flour will absorb more or less liquid than is normally required in the recipe. And it looks like this is the case, where there's not quite enough liquid, so 
we simply add a little bit of water, maybe a, two teaspoons, a, and try that, see how that works. We can keep adding a little water. Remember, you can't take it out once it's in. So you add a little bit at a time, and it looks like we're going to need a little more. You never know with flour. It could take more or less. And then again, your egg could vary in size, so consequently, you would have more or less liquid to go with this. All right, we're getting there. Let's see if we can't get all these bits of flour and the egg. Now, we'll stop at this point and just work with what we have rather than try and incorporate all of that. Although there's some pieces with egg in it there, let's try and get those. Now, once that's completed, we can take that out and we want to knead it a little bit to get that flour and egg and the salt and the olive oil all brought together. And you can do this two ways. You can knead this like I'm doing, just pushing the dough back, folding it over, pushing it out, folding it over until your dough gets a nice texture. Now you need to do that for about eight minutes. However, since we're going to use the pasta machine to make pasta today, let's put this in the background too. We can use our pasta machine. Let's move a few of these items so you can see. And with the pasta machine, you have three sections. The first being the rollers, which are going to first of all, now I've electrified this one to save, you have them with a hand crank, but I've electrified this one. And we're simply gonna take our dough now. It could just use a little touch of flour on it. And we're gonna pass that through the rollers. And that's one of the kneading steps. Let's stop a minute. I've got it set on the wrong setting here. Let's do it right. That's better. Now we do this about six or eight times. And that will knead the dough. You can see it's kind of rough. We simply fold it over, flatten it out, and run it through our process again. Let's see if we can get this done rather quickly. You can see that going through the roller. Now this roller is set at different settings. It gets closer and closer as we set it in. But we've got it on the highest setting at this point. So we're gonna run it through one more time on that setting. Now really this should run through about eight times. But we're gonna run out of time if I do that. And I think we can make the pasta even now. So you can see now it's spread out. We're gonna fold it in thirds and then simply press it. But this time we're gonna change the thickness by turning our lever down to six. And when we do that, it's going to stretch this pasta as well as knead it. As it comes out, you can see it's getting longer. Now there's some holes in it, but that's going to be taken care of by subsequent, subsequent passes through the, through the machine. All right. Now we are gonna run out of time, so I'm gonna speed this up a little bit and jump to four and then to two. And I can see as we do this, this sheet of pasta is going to get longer and longer and longer. Oh, 
All right, we've got now another setting. We're going to change it to. And we're going to drop it down to three. And we'll put this back through our rollers. And you can see this is going to come out a nice long piece of pasta, which will give us a lot of fettuccine. Oh, they're sticking over here. Well, that's all right. All right, we've got stuck there, but that's all right. We'll put our fettuccine out here for the moment and put this piece through. All right, we've got our pasta thin as we want it. We need now to cut it into shape. And to do that, I need to move the motor to take care of the cutting blades. And we take this out of its socket, move it up to the next, lock the motor in place, turn it on. And we want now to cut this into about the size noodles that we want. And we place that in our cutter And when you do that, you come out with some nice fettuccine noodles. So let's put those now onto a sheet. Let's see if I can't do a few more. We'll cut these. And we need to get on with the cooking because we're going to flat run out of time. All right, here's a few more. It goes quickly once you get the dough the thickness that you want. Let's see, we'll try one more and then we'll move on. All right, so one more goes right through our cutters and we come out with our fettuccine. Now this cooks very quickly. Oh, let's cut down the noise. All right, we'll do this dough a little later for another occasion. Now, we've got the water boiling for our pasta. So let's take that and start our pasta. And we've got several of these done already. We'll take the first pasta that we just did and drop it into boiling salted water. Dropping them in, trying to shake them loose as you do. It wants to stick together because it's so fresh. Now, the ones we did a little earlier, you will see under here, are uh, probably a little drier. They are. We can drop those into our, into our boiling water. We can shake them up. That's the best way while they're out here. And then drop those into the boiling water. This should take five minutes to cook. And our other batch, which we had done earlier, let's just move those, shake those so that they will separate, and we will put these into our boiling water. Now that'll come back to the boil, and we'll boil that for about five minutes, drain it, and we should have some delicious pasta to go with our veal scallopini. Again, these are in the way. So let's move those to the back. And coming up here, let's take a nice bowl. This is going to be the bowl for our fettuccine when it's cooked. We're going to take a bowl with some butter, about eight tablespoons, and we're going to put that on top of the bowl of the pot of boiling water. Let's clear our board. We need to go to the veal. Now I've already turned on the butter for sauteing the veal. And we have a nice little piece of veal here. And let's just demonstrate what we've done. There's all the membrane and fat has been taken off. We want to cut about 
and half inch slice, or we'll do two of these anyway. We already have some cut, and we want to pound these out a little larger and thin them. So, so that's our veal. We now take that and add it to the veal we already have. And that's going to require a little salt and pepper. Whoop, got a hole there. Salt and pepper on the scallopini. Now, let's stop a moment. Our pasta, or rather our spinach, should be nicely cooked or blanched. We will take that to the sink and let that drain so that we can serve that in a few minutes. It'll take a little while to drain. You want it to drain as much of the water out of that as you can. So we let that drain. And coming back to our butter here, we want to take the scallopini, dust them lightly, and put them into our butter. Turn these two fires. I have two skillets simply to co cook them quickly all at one time, and we do need quite a few. We have a few guests today on the show, and we want to be sure we have enough of this wonderful dish to satisfy everybody. So taking our scallopines, a very simple dish, you lightly flour these, putting them into butter, there's a little salt and pepper on the, the veal, and they will cook quickly because they're thin. We, let's take all of these now and put them in that flour. And we can toss those quickly. Oh, they're frying up nicely. Oh, we need a little more heat here. And maybe too much heat here, so <laughs> can't win for losing. All right, it just takes about two minutes per side. And shortly we will have our scallopini cooked. We can then take the, oh, my towels are over here. Take the pan and make our masala sauce. Our pasta should be cooking rather nicely at this point. It's boiling nicely. Turning over the pieces of veal, we'll let them saute on the second side. Remember, this is very thin meat, and veal cooks very quickly, especially when it's this thin. You don't want to overcook it. You will toughen this meat. It's basically a tender meat anyway. So let's do that. Let's see if this, this is not quite ready because we didn't have the heat high enough there for a moment. So let's clear up our board a little bit and we will start some of the serving process that we have. All right, those are gonna go into. Now, we have our butter melting on top of the pasta and that's gonna require some Parmesan cheese. We're gonna mix that with the butter and then when we put the hot pasta, this will form a sauce. There'll be a little bit of the water from the pasta. We'll add to the butter and the cheese and make a really fantastic sauce for pasta. Let's turn these over. All right. Now, let's go to our spinach. Since that's about ready, we can finish that dish while this continues the cooking process. One more piece to turn, 
and we can now taking a nice serving dish we're going to take our spinach which has been draining and we want to try and get as much of that water out as possible putting that on the serving dish now you saw that quantity of spinach go into that pot it's amazing how it cooks down but you talk about fresh and delicious and beautiful color we want to spread this out now because on top of that we're going to sprinkle some lemon juice and we have a strainer here we'll strain some lemon we'll do it again and we have a little olive oil so the first thing is to drizzle the lemon juice over the pasta I mean the spinach and then we have a nice good grade of Italian olive oil and that my friend is one delicious vegetable and believe me you'll want to do five pounds of it next time so we have our spinach dish go to our meat now we can take the meat out and put that into our serving dish we'll just put the pieces of veal into the dish and we'll make our sauce and the sauce is made by deglazing the pan with a nice Marsala wine a very delightful wine that's used mostly for cooking in Italy although it's not bad to drink it's really a fantastic cooking flavoring so putting our veal around let's take our Marsala wine we have some we'll add to this a little more and our bottle to add enough to this and that will have created a nice sauce let's get all those bits of brown pieces from the bottom we'll add it to this and disconnecting our pot you can see we've developed a wonderful sauce with a little thickness we pour that over our veal the fragrance is unbelievable this is just so delicious now we only need pasta to go with that we've got our serving bowl it's a little hot we need to take the pasta drain that in the colander all right I'll let that drain let a little bit of the water stay on it because that will add to the sauce and give you a nice volume so our pasta is all ready and it looks beautiful let's fill that in to the cheese and the butter turn some of these heats off and toss this that cheese and the butter with the little bit of the water from the pasta remember there was salt in the water in the pasta and the cheese is going to be somewhat salty and you have one fantastic pasta dish called fettuccine with olive oil and parmesan cheese a veal scallopini with that really flavorful sauce and that's going to go good with some italian bread and the beautiful spinach with that wonderful taste of the olive oil and the lemon our italian meal for tonight we're going to bring this into the dining room in the meantime we'd like you to see the recipes
Well, we have our Italian meal on the table, and it's one of my favorites, I tell you. This scallopini alla masala is just so flavorful. And as you can see, it's a very easy dish to put together. You flour, you saute, you deglaze the pan with the masala, you develop one fantastic sauce with it. And then to accompany that, we had our homemade noodles. They're not hard either. Looks like it because we were rushing in there. But really, making the noodles is something else. And of course, they're so delightful, so much better than the, the commercial variety. And then we're going to round it out with our spinach, with the butter and the lemon. Mm, just delicious. So let's try a little bit of this. We'll take, first of all, a few pieces of our veal scallopini a la masala. All right. Makes a nice serving there. And we'll try a little bit of this juice. Need a spoon, though, that doesn't have holes in it. But we have a little bit of the sauce, and then we'll try some of our pasta. Oh, that is so good with the, with the Parmesan cheese and the butter. It really is just delightful. And you can see they cook so nicely. And then we'll do a little bit of the spinach with the butter and lemon, not butter, but lemon and olive oil. And we have completed what I think is one colorful, flavorful, and delightful Italian meal. Along with that, we're going to have a little bit of Italian bread to use some of that sauce. And of course, a little wine. Now, I like red wine, particularly with this wine dish we have. So I have a little bit of a nice Cabernet Sauvignon to round out our meal. We're going to enjoy this. I hope you'll try it. A biento. Les frites sont prêtes et il y a du 